Whispers. How the heck are you? I am Tony Beer Whisper. I just realized that I am at video. Well, this one here will be video 2800 for me. I don't typically keep track, but I happened to just check and there it was, man. So I thought, well, let's do something special. So I looked, I had one of these left. Uh, my last, the very last, and the specification uh, <laughs> Imperial Stout, 10% 70 IBUs from their Campus Work series. And the best whiskey I happen to have at the moment is my Bush 16. 16 year old single malt Irish whiskey. You know, for the value, I really like this one. Maybe most other Irish whiskeys are, are, are more expensive than this one, but I really think it's underrated. It's just fine. And if you look at single malt, 16 uh, year old single malt scotch, they're much more than this one is. So there you go. I, t I typically see it for as uh, the lowest I see it anymore is 66. Uh, um, some uh, 70, 75 is tended to be up over 70 these days, but I paid 70 including tax for it. So, well, let's have a nice Imperial stat with a nice whiskey for video 2800, man. I mean, let's be honest, this is a great big feat. No, it's just perseverance, man. It's not like, you know, it's not like a TV show where, you know, I'm waiting for sponsors. <laughs> I just do this shit on my own, man. So it's just perseverance after all these years, it's about seven years, I guess, or so I've been doing these videos. And I've done 28 video, 2800 videos in seven years. Just perseverance, man. <laughs> this video has got to keep hitting play button. This is a damn fine imperial stout, man. It really is. So let me give you just a few notes. I get some deep chocolate, a little bit of coffee. Get a little vanilla as well. Oh, they call oh gosh the, oh that is gorgeous they call it a uh, Russian imperial stat to be honest it, it feels like sort of a hybrid between a, a Russian imperial stat and, and a big Irish fes because it has it, it finishes very dry and clean and not as sweet as most uh, Russian imperials but it, it's, it's a little bit it's not quite as dry as an fes to me it almost feels like a hybrid of the two styles and cheers to y'all to here I'll be whiskey whisper. <laughs> I do like this whiskey, man. I do. Again, for the price, it's about 70 bucks, 75 bucks for a 16 year old single malt. It's pretty damn good. I mean, there are others I really like too. I mean, the Red Breast, but I mean, as far as value, I really think this one's a great value. I got my, my Irish pub backdrop behind me, as you see. <laughs> I'm magically transported, man. <laughs> Beam me up. <laughs> Video 2800. How about that? I'd like to pair a nice stout with a nice whiskey. I was actually thinking about doing a bourbon with this, but you know what? I mean, this is the best whiskey I have in the house. This is what we're going to have. Oh, that is incredible. It's, it's just remarkably smooth. I know Scotch drinkers hate the word smooth because it means something about peat and something else, according to some jackass on some pretentious whiskey site. <laughs> it just cracked me up. But to everybody else, to, to normal whiskey drinkers, smooth just means it may, doesn't make you do this. Some toffee like sweetness in there, uh, a nice portion of vanilla. I feel some oak near the end, uh, just a, the slightest hint of spice from the bourbon barrel. And by golly, it pairs beautifully well <laughs> with this imperial stout. Yeah, you know, it's funny when, when they first started, when, when, uh, Public House first started the first time I went there. Um, it wasn't all session beers, but everything was more session esque, you know, just lower ABV. I don't know that anything knocked my socks off, but there was some really good stuff there. But now they're doing these bigger beers and they're getting out of the box, and, and, and I really like it, man. This beer's been just, oh, I just love the hell out of it. It was 10 bucks, 10 bucks for a four pack. Yeah, four pack. Uh, but again, I mean, it's a 10% 70 IBU Russian Imperial. It's freaking brilliant, man. Oh, oh makes my inners go, oh, baby. <laughs> I 
Oh, man, it gives me a chubby. It's that good. Oh, man, between that and the whiskey. Oh, my God, I don't know which one's making me stiffer. Hey, <laughs> I digress, man. So there you go. Hey, this <laughs> video 2800, man. How about that? Remember when I hit video 100, I thought that was something. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Kind of quick, get, quick keeping track at some point. A lot of folks number theirs. I've never done that. And I just happened to would, would catch it. So I go 800, 1,000, you know, 2,000. And then that kind of, then I really did lose track. And now I'm at video 2800. Don't know how I got here. I try to keep track, so, you know, when I hit 3,000. I don't know if I keep track of 2,900, but if I find it, I'll use it. But I really want to do a 3,000. Hey, I'm still here, man. <laughs> Too much, much to the chagrin of some tight ass beer and whiskey drinks. <laughs> uh, the snobs don't tend to like me very much. <laughs> I love the texture on this whiskey. It's just velvety smooth. It's just, I just love the heck out of it. Uh, again, I mean, I, I know certain scotch drinkers don't like the word smooth, but sometimes that's the best word to use for a whiskey. And there are other describers, I guess it's, if that's all you can say about it, maybe you need to learn more. But but to not use it altogether because you're so snobby and so pretentious is just beyond ridiculous to me. Which is why I find myself more at home with Irish whiskey and bourbon than scotch. There are a few scotch whiskeys I do enjoy, but I don't like the pretentiousness that seems to surround scotch whiskey. I'm, a, I'm not a pretentious guy. I'm a very working class kind of guy. So I tend to, maybe that's why I, I gravitate more towards bourbon because it's a working class whiskey. Ah. Uh, Cheeseburgers, that's good. Oh, mercy, person. Damn. Damn, skip it, baby. <laughs> you know, I first started doing a take a drink and I'll, I'll, I'll reminisce a little bit. I actually, I had, it took me a while to start doing the videos. I had several people tell me you need to start doing this. Uh, have you seen the people that are doing it? I'm not going to mention any names, but it seemed like the people that were out there at the very beginning doing beer reviews, <laughs> in air quotes, and beer reviews, uh, people that were doing this very dry, monotone beer review that had no that had no personality, and, and the, I mean, there, there was nothing, you know, and, and, and it, it started to become trendy for these guys to not even review beer within its style. I mean, they were like lumping all beer as if it was one great big thing. I mean, if you don't know what style you're talking about, I mean, if they were talking about a Pilsner comparing it to an IPA, I'm thinking, really? <laughs> Are you guys really that freaking stupid? So yeah, it started frustrating me, but but I also didn't want to do a beer review, to be honest with you. I wanted more talk about things. And it, it sort of morphed over time, like most things do, and it became more of a pub conversation, which is how I well, anyway, that's how I would like it to be. I started talking about other things and talk about the beer, but I didn't. I didn't want to do the, the typical like everybody else does. You know, here, watch me pour it very pretentiously. Let me show you the beer, and then I will check the nose. I'll talk about lacing, and <laughs> I'm not going to do any of that pretentious ass stuff. <laughs> I'm just not going to, which, you know, didn't endear me to uh, certain members of the beer communities, right? They didn't like that I wasn't one of the guys, that I wasn't following in line. And, and I was getting some negative comments um, from some of these serious pretentious folks. But that just made me do it more. <laughs> I, I bow it down to these chicken shit monkeys, you know what I mean? <laughs> These pretentious asses that are ruining craft beer for the rest of us that just want to enjoy it. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot call yourself a beer reviewer if you cannot review with his style. I, I actually had this argument with some person. <laughs> I was about to use a word and I said not to. Well, back, well, how can you know every style? You can't review beer with this style. How can anybody possibly know every style? Then don't call yourself a beer reviewer. Right? If you don't get that style, maybe you shouldn't be reviewing that particular beer. Give notes. Tell us what you think about it. But you're not reviewing the beer if you don't understand the style. I mean, the ignorance of that is just astounding to me. No, you, you cannot review a beer if you don't understand the style that it is. 
And maybe if you don't understand that style, how can I understand? Well, how about learning them one by one? As you do the beer, you can do some freaking research. You're on a freaking computer. Don't be a monkey. <laughs> you know, look the shit up. Don't just sit there, press play, and say, hey, I'm a beer reviewer. <laughs> I don't understand this style, but I'll tell you what I think of it anyway. <laughs> I don't like this Pilsner because it's not as hoppy as the IPA I just drank. <laughs> and these guys are freaking monkeys. <laughs> They're jackasses, and they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. That's why they don't want to review the beer within stock, because they don't understand any of it. But, but they want to somehow get free beer or try to make some money, calling themselves a beer reviewer, even though they have no business doing so. <laughs> That's my that's my video 2800 rant, man. There's a few guys out there that really know what they're talking about. I mean, I've mentioned this guy's name before, uh, BrewGuru.com, John the Brew Guru. I mean, he understands style. So when he gives you a beer review, he's giving you that beer with his style. So I mean, some of these guys like Brew Guru, you can take to heart. He knows what he's talking about, but that's why I don't like sites like rate beer or beer advocates, because most of these guys leaving so-called beer reviews have no idea what the hell they're talking about. They don't know their pilsners from their porters. They don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. They're trying to tell you what you ought to be drinking now. Don't pull up those. If you go to the beer cooler and you're not sure what to order, don't look up beer advocate or, or rate beer. Because if you do, it just tells me you're ignorant. <laughs> pull up. <laughs> Pull up the brewer's website. Just get the particulars on the beer or, or you know, pull up the style and, and, and read up on the style, you know, from whatever origin that style is. And, you know, you don't look at those two sites. So they're, they're, they're no help whatsoever because I'll give you, uh, you may find a few coherent <laughs> reviews, but for the most part, you're going to get on there and you're going to get misinformation. And that's what you're going to learn, misinformation. And that's what's happened is a lot of these so-called beer reviewers, you, you, is you've had person upon person learning from misinformation. <laughs> uh, I thought I was done with the rant, but I just continued on with it a little bit. Ah, oh, cheese whiz, that's good. That is a good whiskey, though. Golly, golly, just makes my mouth water. <laughs> Anyways, uh, whiskey, I do love some whiskey, too. I, you know, I don't, that's, I, again, I don't call myself a beer reviewer or a whiskey whis uh, whiskey reviewer. I'm just a guy that loves both. I'm passionate about both. So the videos I do, uh, I hope, show that passion. I'm not here to tell you what you ought to buy or what you ought to be drinking. I just want to show you what I'm passionate about and, and hopefully maybe entertain you all a little bit. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to be pretentious. I'm not here to preach at you, even though sometimes it's so I do that. But I try to do it in a humorous way, man. <laughs> because quite frankly, I think everything's funny. <laughs> We're watching a show the other day and someone asked this guy who was laughing and which seemed to be an inappropriate time to be laughing, which I do all the time. And I'm People have commented on that from time to time. And, and the guy says, what well, was why are you laughing? He says, well, so I don't start crying. <laughs> that's that's me, man. <laughs> My wife and I just looked at each other at demo. <laughs> so that's well, now you know why I'm laughing all the time. We've been through some things. We lost our son to cancer uh, just short of five years ago now. And you know, it's funny when at first table, it's not funny, but I didn't know what other word to use at that moment. But, uh, you know, at that time, you know, we, we started looking around and it seemed like everybody we we had known that where that happened to before us, uh, the couples had split up. And then, you know, the, we had, uh, other folks had lost their children right about the same time uh, we lost Seamus. And my wife went to a sort of a reunion of sorts a year later. I couldn't do it. I, I did something else. I just couldn't. But anyway, um, uh, the couples that were together you know, before had split up in, in that year's time. And we just kind of looked at each other and made a decision that we, you know, we weren't going to let that happen to us. You know? yeah. I, I think a lot of the reason is, to be honest with you, I, I think there's a lot of blame. 
you know, people want to blame somebody else or something, and you don't know who to blame. You tend to blame your your partner for this, that, or the other. You know, there has to be a reason. Um, my wife and I having the self esteem issues that we both have. Just we each blamed ourselves for things. You know, we could have made decisions along the way. We thought we were making the right decisions, and we blamed the doctors we had. And, and to be honest with you, I'm not saying I don't, anybody did anything wrong. Is is just. I mean, sometimes things happen. There is a particular organization that, that's not involved with the hospital where our son was. They have the ability to help us. You know, I'm not going to mention their name right now, but, uh, you know, they, they claim they help everybody. <laughs> they don't deny anybody help. They don't deny anybody treatment. And, and to be fair to them, I suppose, they didn't owe us anything. They weren't obligated to help. But it was our last chance, and, and, and what they had may not have helped us, but they had the ability to help, and they chose not to. So I will not support that organization. It just killed me at Christmas time when you see all their damn commercials, and they're all over, you know, uh, you know NBC's interview and the lead person, um, you know, an actress of, of a bygone era who wasn't really that big in the first place. But her dad was well-known. All of a sudden, she's a spokesperson. I just get tired of hearing what a wonderful organization this is when I know for a fact, not my opinion, for an absolute fact, they had the ability to help my son and, and they didn't. Now, with the treatment that they denied us cured him, well, we don't know, or, or sent him into remission. Uh, we don't know. It may not have done anything. But but I guess that's what irritates me is they had the opportunity to, to let us use that protocol they had and they chose not to. And so I will never give a, I won't give a penny to that organization. I won't watch their commercials. If I walk into a conversation and somebody's talking about them, I'll walk the hell away. Because if I don't, I'm going to get ugly with them. This is not, in my opinion, you know, they have helped a lot of people. So I don't want to say they're a bad organization, but they had the ability to help us and they chose not to. I will not give a red cent to that damn organization. However, I will not say a bad word about uh, St. Louis Children's Hospital. I think they did everything they can. If I'm going to give money, I'm going to give it to Pedal the Cause. They're, they're, uh, they're, they have a San Diego chapter, and they have a St. Louis chapter, although the first chapter was in St. Louis. Uh, but I will give to them because I know where that money's going. 100% of what you give goes to cancer research. You're not paying some wannabe actress... <laughs> You know, some has been actress, you know, you know, you're a hundred percent of what you give, uh, everything, uh, they get corporate donations to cover the benefits and everything else they do. But if, if you out there give a penny, it goes to research. If you give a dollar, it goes to research. So anyway, so look at, you know, forget that other organization and give to peddle the cause that's trying to find a cure and not not just a, a PR organization, which I'm starting to feel that other organization is, because that's what it feels like to me, nothing but a PR organization. <laughs> Anyways, that's my other soapbox for the day. I want to get talking about that, boy. Ooh. Listen, I'm not going to mention the name, you know, but it's not hard to figure out who I'm talking about if you're paying attention. Anyway. <laughs> I probably talked as long as I need to. Hey, I want to just want to thank people that have supported me for 2,800 videos. I've had folks that have stuck with me from the beginning. I've had folks that, that I piss off, and I've got folks that love what I do. Uh, but I just want to thank anybody that's ever watched a video, whether you love me, hate me, or just don't give a rat's ass. Either way, I am Tom the Whiskey Whisperer. Oh, that's some damn fine whiskey. Prolific whiskey drinker, whiskey evangelist. I'm also, I say, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I have a dual personality, man. I'm also Tom the Beer Whisperer. Prolific beer drinker, beer evangelist. I've got a website if anybody's interested. Here's a, the shameless plug portion of this video. Uh, TomTheBeerWhisperer.com you want to email me, it's time to beer whisper at yahoo.com. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, uh, let me go pick up the whiskey again. I am Tyler Whiskey Whisperer, whiskey evangelist, prolific whiskey drinker, purveyor wisdom, man. I am Tom to beer whisper, uh, beer evangelist, prolific beer drinker, purveyor wisdom, man.
<laughs> Let me pick them both up. And all around, good guy. Cheers and thank you all for for having faith, man. And sticking with me. I love y'all. Well, I don't really love you. It's just something we say. <laughs> some of you like to love. Some of you not so much. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs>